You taking photos for your kids? <laughs> yes. <sir>. <laughs> what <laughs> did they say? Have you told them what you were doing today? Well, I'm not interviewed every day of the week. That's a, cool, that's a big thing in our house. It's a cool experience. Yeah. I love that. How old are your kids? Uh, Jack's 17, Holly's 13. Yeah. Oh, wow. So they're like, Dad, are you going to be on TikTok? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you <famous> might. <laughs> you know. Who knows what will happen? I'm going to go viral. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Uh, it's so funny. Speaking of going viral, we interviewed a bunch of TikTokers in here recently. And you were on a meeting. Now, you can't really see it because of the camera angle, but John sits like literally right there. It's probably no more than like two meters. And they were like, oh, I can see that guy's meeting. And I was like, mate, that's John from Geolytical. This guy tells stories with maps. This guy flies drones all over Ireland and maps it digitally. He's got, he's really, really cool. They're like, that's class. And then I was chatting to you and you say that my logo is basically in your way all the time. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> The amount of people that have asked me, tell me about Best of Belfast, I tell them all about you. I love that. That's the power of co-working, isn't it? It's the Big wee kind of, um, you scratch my back, I scratch your back. Very definitely, cool. Definitely. So talk to me about being a petrol head. <laughs> yes. it's. Uh, and what even is that? It's not even a hobby, it's a passion, I think. Yeah, <laughs> Big time. It's a death yeah, wish. Yeah. It really is, yeah. It drives, does my wife's head in. Um, uh, in fact, uh, she drove when she was eight months pregnant to pick me up from a rally where I'd crashed in the circuit of Ireland. She keeps, still reminds me about that. Eight months? <laughs> yep. Unbelievable. So long, long, long time ago, man. <laughs> First or second, kid? Um, that was our second. That was Holly. Yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, so yeah, big petrol head love. So how'd you um, get into rallying? Uh, I've always wanted to do it. It's so funny, you know. A friend of mine, we thought, ah, oh, we're too old for this stuff. We're you know, big, big. We love all motorsport. Went to a few rallies together, and we chatted more and more. And we thought, why don't we just do this? So we just, he did up a rally car, basically, and we did our first rally at Bishop's Court, maybe. 15 years ago and we won <laughs> what <laughs> exactly so at the like end of the rally we're standing on a, on a podium with Derek McGarity getting a, a like a, an award for our for winning our grip we couldn't couldn't believe it so that gave us the bug then big time <laughs> so you got into the sport late Oh, yeah, definitely. Always wanted to compete and just never thought oh, I couldn't do that. But uh, we just did it and it was fantastic. Did you grow up driving like mini motos or quads or where, did, where does the love for I it think come it, from? It was fr a frustration of never getting that stuff. I always wanted a scrambler. I was never allowed a scrambler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where was home for you? Uh, Cross Gar was brought up in a pub. Uh, fantastic being brought up in the pub. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it was great, brilliant. Apart from the bit where my friends would come and have a few drinks and then they would go out and I'd have to keep working behind <laughs> the bar apart from that bit. But yeah. Like, How old do you reckon were you whenever you first started working? God, I think it was about 11. Yeah. It's <laughs> great, man. Grateful. So great. Our, our regulars like were like my uncles, you know, yeah. and aunties. Yeah, it was lovely. Ma, cross gar, <laughs> yeah. So public and family? Uh, yeah, yeah. My granny was the oldest publican in Ireland. She was 100 and she was still working in the bar. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Mrs. McGee in Crossgar. What was the name of the pub? <laughs> McGee's. Yeah. Uh, of course. <laughs> I mean, why did I even ask? Wow. So you grew up in Crossgar, son of, you know, came from a publican family, didn't get a scrambler. <laughs> Where does, you're going to say tech. Before I ask about tech, where does geography come into it? Well, that's a really, really good one. Uh, funny, it didn't, really. I always liked maths. I went into computers. So, you know, wanted, I kind of wanted to do a degree where I that was my job. So I thought, you know, I'll do computers. Mm. First job, I worked in shorts. So I was looking after yeah, yeah, production, heavy-duty mainframes and shorts, things, computer size of a room. That's how long <laughs> ago it was. And <laughs> I got a call one day from a recruiter because I was kind of looking to change. And they said, would you like to come and work in GIS? I never heard of this yeah what on earth is gis so, so geographical information systems is a thing that i wasn't aware of then went to the ordnance survey which is where the job was had a look around and thought this is really interesting so i became kind of on-site support person programmer for the ordnance survey colby house just around the last room wow yeah so that was the national ordnance surveys like debut into the digital space. Obviously before I was in a salvage place recently and I saw these amazing ordnance survey maps. Yeah. Like thousands of them. Mm -hmm. And some of them were hand drawn. Like, like works of art. It's yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. So obviously tech comes onto the scene, digital becomes a big thing. And so you were involved in basically what? I oh God started really looking after their mainframe systems that, that made all the maps. I went from that to probably my most 
first big interesting project there was really revolution, really digitizing their whole organization. So, so they had, you know, people who would go out with these old sketching cases and literally draw, you know, the new maps, measure them, draw them. And then someone back in the office would do, do the same again, basically digitize these into a computer. Like a well, digital tracing paper exactly, almost. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I put in a system that made that mobile, basically. They had wow. tablets, and these really rugged tablets that they took in the field and d did it directly, you know, so they measured directly using the really accurate GPS, and that went straight into the map. Wow, so yeah. you weren't a geography nerd? No. Interesting. Yeah. I've really become one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I certainly hope so. <laughs> so, like, what was your first computer what was your first everyone you know anyone who's techie had like a wee something that would fiddle around with do you know what I mean mine was video games because well that's just the way it was me too I had a Commodore 64 mm. with a tape player for games the games used to load on tape that's took about half an hour <laughs> oh yeah and if they I remember playing one and it was like if it glitched out you had to reload it didn't that's you that's the one. oh yeah. man carnage that is absolute carnage yeah so when's the first time you Got your hands on a drone. Oh, that's, that's another good one. A friend of mine, actually, it t t his two kids, got one for Christmas. Maybe, could be a good 10 years ago now, I'm sure. Whoa. Uh, and I went and looked at this thing. I was like, God, that's really good fun. Yeah. And I think I could maybe use that in my work. So went from there to, um, I became a licensed drone pilot. And probably for the past five or six years, done quite a bit of different drone work. Yeah. Games, different, yeah, government agencies, surveying companies. So... One of the things, I mean, Geolytical, I think is a great name. I, I tell you that probably every month. Thanks. Uh, I really like whenever you say telling stories with maps. So unpack that a wee bit for us. Because yeah, for yeah. You know, people like myself, I think the most I've ever had my hands on a map was for Duke of Ed. And then other than that, I haven't really looked at it other than every single day on Google Maps. <laughs> As I was speaking, I was like, actually, maps play such a big part of my life. And I only thought about it this very second. <laughs> Magic. That's a, that's a great question. Um, I, I, I suppose it's about, I kind of simplify my, my job, for, you know, and go, oh, yeah, it's about, it's about maps, really. But it's really about spatial information, anything yeah. about where things are that, I mean, the, the, the real power of it is having multiple in, pieces of information, layers of information about a place and using that to tell a story. So an example might be working out where to put a new play park because there's, you know, using population numbers, demographics, maybe the terrain, the type of land, you know, what, what's close by uh, to work out, OK, there's an, there, there should be a park there because there isn't one. So mm. that's the kind of stuff I do, looking at where things are and where they should be. Basically. Interesting. Yeah. So does somebody have, maybe not for the whole world, but do they have like a really souped up version of Google Maps where you can see <laughs> population, you can see, I don't know, rainfall patterns, you know, you can see like way more layers of information than I would see, say, on Google Earth or Google Maps. I think you've just described my every day. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> If you're looking for marketing, <laughs> just... <yeah. laughs> Beautifully described it, yeah. So, wow. I, I mean, I, an example would be, I was working on, on a nice dashboard recently where you can not just look at the current, say, demographics, population numbers, things like that, but also play it forward as well and look at, you know, where things are going to potentially happen mm. in the future and you can apply that to lots of uh, scenarios that's why i love the gis field you know that could be that could be where flooding happens you know where's liable to flood with climate change you know looking at how things are you know may change in the future so you know the the pol polar regions you know and how ice is you know um uh, well melting and how that will play forward as well so lots of that type of scenario planning i would do with as you say you know loads and loads of different yeah. uh, layers of information yeah. it's really interesting uh you know i think geography i think maps i think about exploration i think adventure i think frontier finding and being the first to do something i was chatting to a guy recently and your kids will love this but he has a really successful minecraft business brilliant and he loves the titanic uh -huh. so he digitally recreated the titanic uh -huh. very very detailed in minecraft wow. and he was the first person to do it obviously uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so was there kind of like a big Christopher Columbus style moment where there were the early explorers and mappers of the digital space? 
you know, because you have you've physical maps and then all of a sudden people start doing it digitally. And is there like a global map race to see who can digitize <laughs> first? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, a, that's an, again, a great one. Um, I think there's been a real evolution in, in the field. You know, it used, to, it used to go from, I mean, there were massive mainframes, the size of rooms that were, you know, you had to have to, to do GIS. Now you can really do it on any, any type of device. So that's multiplied the possibilities up hugely. And, you know, people can do their own mapping, just as you say there, you know. Mm. Things like OpenStreetMap is volunteered geographic information, so you can you know map your street. You know if you see things that that aren't there, crazy. Uh, but that's sort of um, you know uh, I suppose reaching out and, and and getting people to provide geographic information is one of the real growth areas. You know where people can say actually I have a you know an issue on a path here that I'd like someone to fix. Things that things like that you know can be real really useful. Just as you're speaking there, I don't know. If I worked for something to do with the roads and infrastructure, if I had like a wee map and I was able to see in real time, sorry that everything comes back to Google Maps for me. You ever <laughs> be driving down the road and there'll be like a wee alert comes up that there's like an accident or something? You know, someone is flagged. Hey, you know, it's not going to be red, this traffic, whatever. Imagine like being a guy who fixes potholes for a living and just opening up this map and seeing every pothole in Northern Ireland <laughs> and be like, all right, lads, let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. And that sort of real time information is more and more widely available. You know, Mm -hmm. you can look at a world map of traffic, you know, traffic flows that are kind of, you know, there's a five minute delay on across the whole world. There's a wealth of that sort of real time information. That's kind of terrifying, (laughs) but amazing at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Another real growth area is AI, you know, artificial intelligence with, you know, things like aerial photographs, satellite photographs, really to automatically work out what things are, you know, Mm. From, from the photographs, you know, and that's used for things like climate change as well, looking at how, you know, areas like peatlands, which are really good for, you know, for absorbing carbon, um, really, um, how, how they're changing in size and, you know, over over time and the effect that'll have on the climate. Really, really interesting. Do you, like, I've seen on your screen a few times walking past, you've got these beautiful looking, I don't know what else to call them other than pictures like these landscapes and they're colored and they're kind of 3d like what what are you doing with that oh when you oh when i put up the 3d models ah yeah yeah so i uh, that's one of the things i use the drones for a lot is um to take photographs basically an example would maybe be of a farm and stitch all the photographs together using software and make a 3D model of it. So basically, that, that can be done automatically. And, and there's a lot of different software packages that do it. And so stick with the farm. What's the use case of that? I'm a farmer. Mm-hmm. I now have a 3D model of my farm, which is amazing to show the grandkids. What else can I do with it? So things like maybe where it's going to be potential for slurry to run off into rivers and, mm-hmm. and cause pollution, you know, looking at slopes, terrain, you know, can be really useful for variety things, flooding, you know, and how maybe if, if, if it's particularly wet, how uh, rain's going to run off a field or whatever, you know, where it's going to be susceptible. Really interesting. Why, broad question, why are maps important from like it? No, I don't even want to shoehorn you in this way. I'm thinking, you know, like there must be defense and security stuff around maps. There must be... I mean, the government really wants to know what's going on yep. in their own country and probably in other countries. So speak to why are maps important in a modern landscape today? I think w- one of the, the a scenario I actually work, work at or have started working at more and more is kind of things like search and rescue. So, you know, having, you know, a lot of different geographical information together in the same place can help in that sort of scenario in emergency plan and emergency response mm. you know that that would be certainly a really big government use of, of of data you know and you know the kind of real-time information you're describing as well if some sort of um incident happens then having you know real-time information maybe things like cctv traffic cameras you know just generally where traffic is things like that are fundamental to that that sort of that sort of thing Gonna ask you a very simple, mm-hmm. but probably my favorite question to ask people in here. How do you make money? <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, <laughs> people tend to, uh, people value my advice and, and, and thoughts and I suppose experience. So I, I contract, I Great. Uh, yeah, get paid 
by the day, which is very, very, uh, very nice. Awesome. Yeah, I kind of think, you know, in IT, IT is hard, you know, as you know, and uh, you, you, I suppose you, you spend time working on hard, hard projects. And once you get, I suppose, go through those hard years and get that experience, then there becomes a kind of nice time at the end. Where, <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you, um, others benefit from your experience. I That's suppose. awesome. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah, it's a hero's journey. <laughs> so switching gears then. Why do you like coming to work? Like, why do you like coming to Ormo Baths? Oh, uh, for a start, I really like the company, you mm. know. Um, through COVID, uh, it was pretty tough. I think everybody found it exactly the same. I really am not a huge fan of working at home all the time. And it was it was tough. So I, I really like the interaction. Yeah, the company. Yeah, and it's, it's a cool place to be as well, cool. you know. Really nice people. How would you get linked into here? Uh, that's a good question. I'm very friendly with uh, guys in a company called Cloudsmith. Yeah, yeah. And w I shared an office with them, and uh, their office, uh, they were th actually, they I think they did away with their office after COVID. They don't really have one now. So I, I moved out, and they were very, very nice of them. They helped me get in here. So, Class. Yeah, yeah, good very friends. cool. <laughs> Wrapping up then, what would you say has been the hardest part of your business journey so far? I'll probably get out on my own. It's, it's it's something I talked about doing for 20 mm. years, probably longer. But actually having the nerve to do it was difficult, yeah. And even when I did it, I thought, have I done the right thing? But uh, it's the best thing I ever did. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Final question then, John. If you could go back in time to a 18-year-old version of yourself, mm -hmm. what sort of things would you say to him? I think try something that you don't really know what's going to come out of it. You know, mm. it's just something that interests you. Go the, go with, with what interests you and try things. You know, don't be afraid to try stuff that you can't really see where it's going because it can take you somewhere really interesting. Awesome. John, you crushed it. <laughs> Your kids will be proud. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure, man. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's yeah really, really great. <laughs> and thank you so much for listening. Really appreciate you checking it out. Whether you are a resident already in Ormo Bass, just having a nosy to get to know a bit about John so you can ask him some interesting questions in the lunchroom. Or if lunchroom, by the way, very American. Was well, not very American? <laughs> yeah. I think kitchen is the is the correct <laughs> word that we use, isn't it? <laughs> uh, if you're on the Ormo Bass website and you're not part of this amazing place, we would love to have you here. Uh, whether you're a one-person business, two, three, ten of you, and you're looking for a place to call your business home, uh, we'd love to arrange a coffee with you and show you around the place and hopefully uh, where you could sit as well. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you're interested in finding out the stories of some of our other members, you can scroll through. There's probably about 20 stories and episodes just like this. And other than that, hope you have a great rest of your day. Love that. See you later. <laughs>